Well, this is my our facility, and uh, down here, can you see the point? Yes, we can. Thank you. Well, uh, here you have our trichogramma biofactors, and all this stuff belong to my team here in Brazil. Well, I put this picture some time years ago, many years ago. I was in um, Mali, I worked with this farmer. And uh, before I got there, someone come here in Brazil, he received training to set up a biofactor there. At that time, this biofactor is supposed to produce trichogramma for uh, five country. Mali, Burkina Faso, Togo, uh, uh, I will forget it too, but at least uh, five different countries, many years ago. So before Spodop uh, arrived there, the, the, the target was cotton Lepidoptera. And uh, just uh, some years later, the Spodopter Fujipirna arrived there too. Well, uh, thank you again, Dr. David to invite me to talk to these young people of, of Kenya, uh, work with a uh, farmer to promote IPM and specifically with biological control. Well, my initial remark is, think carefully before decide to use chemical in a family farm area. There is no silver bullet against adopter Fujipirna. I'm going to show why. Uh, another thing, do not increase the degree of resistance or create a resistant pest. It's not only in Kenya, it's over the world. Application error may increase even more pest resistant level and certainly negatively impact the population of beneficial organisms. Think carefully before decide what technology should be used to control the pest in family farm areas. Avoid the use of chemical to give biological control agent the opportunity to adapt to the new host or prey. Someone say, well, but armyworm is in Africa. There is no natural enemies. It's a big mistake, for sure. The insect was not there, but once it arrived in this country, immediately some natural enemies you're going to adapt. It, but if you put too much chemical pesticide, you are delayed too much. It maybe it's too late. Remember, Using egg parasitoid and or microbial products such as virus, fungi, bacteria, or even plant extract such as neem for larvae are viable alternatives to chemical. So I insist that the farmer should have this in mind. Chemical pesticide is not the solution, even here in Brazil. What the reason why the farmer should avoid the use of chemicals? Risk to the environment, especially, and especially in Africa, uh, because of the contamination of the groundwater. I visited Malawi, the, uh, the, the groundwater is almost <laughs> in the soil surface. So you, you must, you have a lot of risk if you put them aside. Well, obviously, the risk to the consumer. It's a direct or indirect effect. We need a special equipment. In front of some regions, it's hard to get this, all this stuff there, the protection, personal protection equipment. And uh, also elimination of useful insects such as bee and other pollinator. Brazil today has a lot of biofactors producing bees just to do the job as a pollinator. It's a good job here. 
So you, you must uh, protect the bees. Our, our strategies, and I hope that can be used in Africa. Uh, I put here the strategy to succeed in control of the pest in maize. First of all, establish an interested group, including on a local base, farmer, consultant, we call a public or private, scientists, university people, uh, research institute, biofactor. Here in Brazil, uh, some years ago, there is a lot of commercial biofactor, but I believe that farmer through association can have uh, the biofactor by themselves. Uh, another point, establish the steps of the program and promote the employment of all involved. It's very important. Uh, there is no way to work uh, with, with just one farmer. It should be a region. And simple, use a connection. For example, WhatsApp, to immediately share with the group any question. And in this group, should be, it should have an coordinator uh, that's supposed to immediately give all the response to the farmer. And this is the best way you are getting good results in Brazil. Like this. So have the farmers at a central point, is a platform, it's a WhatsApp platform, a consultant, biofactor, and I put uh, uh, also the possibility of the farmer biofactor. And what do you have here? You have a decision make and use pheromone trap and an action. Use the trichogram. Easy like that. It could be trichogram or telenovus. It doesn't matter. It's an egg parasitoid. Well, so the first thing is most important thing is accurately identify the arrival and the continued flow, flow of input in the target area especially of the moss. You must know when the moss arrive in the base field and for this point and go to the all the year, the amount of moss that's just coming to the farm. It's a very important, it's a key point. Remember, if you use larvae or injury, they are not good parameter to take the decision, especially depending on the time of monitoring is done. High percentage of over 30 inster is hard to control. So if you uh, don't use a very precise monitoring tools, if you're going to apply any chemical product or biological product, you are not going to kill the larvae. And also, there is one mistake that is easy to, to, to make. Plants without any easily visual injury may be infected. Maybe you can just subestimate pest population. And also, you, you must know the biologic parameter of the pest especially in relation to temperature, enable the farmer to estimate the number of generation of the insect. In Brazil, uh, uh, you, uh, the people say, well, now you have uh, BT, maize, you're going to solve the problem. Huh, it's not correct. I'm going to show how, how many hosts this insect have. And uh, use the biological control. Is the best way. And uh, this is uh, uh, just to show you in a, a small farmer condition. Even if there's small farmer, sometimes uh, people, farmer that don't have enough money, but they can do the, the they can use the high tech, such as a pheromone trap. It's easy to do. So just showing uh, some uh, different uh, farmer, but 
look at the pharma. They are very, very happy to use this technology, get good yields, and protect the environment. One thing, a good question, when should I set up the pharma? Well, if I want to identify the arrival of the moss, I should play the, the trap before planting. So I, I get in advance the result. But they say, but the, far, the maize crop is not there uh, well, for sure. But the insect is still flight. So this is one uh, uh, necessity to use the, the, the pheromone trap before planting. And uh, one trap should be stay at one meter above ground and one trap monitoring five hectares. So this is why the price is not so high. And now I'm not going to enter in detail because of the time, but our decision point is if you capture three moss per trap, is, uh, is the decision point. In this case, for sure, when you have the connection, uh, the farmer say, well, put the, uh, the WhatsApp, well, I have three moss in, the, uh, in this uh, trap. So everyone know this data. So the BioFact do give the triple gram and the release in the field. Okay. Look, the, my decision point is three moss. How many moss can I see here? Too much. It may be in some country in Africa. It could be thing like this, but doesn't matter. This much of insect or three is my decision point. It doesn't matter because using the trichogram, I'm going to show you the amount that you release uh, there is a, a, a safe point there, but it's a very heavy infestation. Can you see uh, almost uh, in this uh, particular picture, there is no contamination. All of these are spodopter. This is very, maybe the last one to be captured. You can see the, all the marks uh, on the wings of the male. Easily the farmer can do this. And this is the most important thing. This slide here is a historical data from July to June, is a one year. You see, each point here, pick, is the capture of the insect. Look, so if you have this data in your country, you see, well, if I used to uh, cultivate the corn in October, you see, if you plant by the end of September, we already can see a lot of moss waiting for the maize, waiting for the maize. And it continues to the season. And you can ask right now, well, in this case, how many times should I uh, use a tool to control the pest? One, two, three. If you put chemical pesticide, or even in some case, is a, is a good for Dr. Dave, even the, the, the uh, microbiological uh, insecticide. Now you see, if the moss is just arriving every day, if sometimes there is rain that wash up the, the product, you see, you must be very careful. So maybe the best uh, way is put together the parasito egg parasitoid and also, if needed, complete with micro microbial. But the most important thing is not no, it's not the it's a daily capture, but the accumulate capture. Look, it's the same thing, same uh, slide that I showed before. Here you get a, a, during one year almost 451 moths. Look. In any time, in any time you used to plant, here in Brazil have a semi crop, a second season, seeds. See, you have spot up all the time. All the time. So when I, well, someone say, well, I have uh, the silver bullet. Oh, 
Darky. It's not really true. It is in the past, when you didn't have this data on moss, so you can say, well, you must take care of your crop. Look, continuous flow of moss, rain occurring during the season, short, very short residual effect of chemicals or microbiological, the product removed from plants by rain water may result in low efficiency of pest control. And this is the, the easiest way to the pest to get resistance. So you must be clever to control the insect. Well, you, you must know the biological parameter of the insect, especially in relation to temperature. You see here, the, the couple, very, very young corn, already on the nests. And the insect used to, after hatch, measuring about one millimeter, can go to 45 millimeter. After that, they just transform it in a pupa under the soil. So you must know this and say, look, uh, if you consider, this is a uh, data from different uh, uh, scientific papers. The last five, the incubation period is on three days. The larvae is around 20 days. And the, 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 the pupa, 10 days. Uh, in summary, the total cycle is 33 days in summer. But if you remember the capturing, in, in reality, this uh, data here indicated if the population is starting today, but you have one today, Tomorrow, there is moss again, and moss, and moss, and moss. So you have a, a lot of generation at the same time. It's become very difficult for the farmer uh, to control using uh, tools that cannot provide uh, good efficiency. Look, interesting, uh, in the left, uh, just a hatching larvae, Immediately they disseminate in the field. It's very interesting because uh, in the, you see, well, as I told you before, maybe some of these of insects just moving like this next slide here. What happened? Immediately for uh, some, maybe two, three hours, the newly born larvae just to drop from the plant where the egg nest was and move to the next plant. It's interesting, my fowl army, uh, my master thesis in Purdue were exactly with this insect just doing this. So uh, maybe it is interesting because in some plant, the insect move to a new plant, go to the world, so it is hard to understand because it seems that there is no damage because it's just the insect is deep in the world. So you must take care. You see, when you use this initial damage symptom, uh, in case of Brazil, it's almost too late. Uh, and you see, it depends also the time you're going to go uh, uh, to the field to try to guess the amount of uh, infested plant. So this is the reason why you, you suggest to use uh, trap. Or if you don't have, uh, for example, uh, the, uh, the commercial pheromone, uh, just to set up, Dr. Dave can do this. Uh, a small uh, hearing colony or product and use uh, Virgin female, three virgin female do the job. So if you can just help the farmer, you can do this easily. It's not only for flower and for another lepidopter pest. Because you see, uh, this pedopter is well adapted pest. Is it called flower and worm? And, uh, but today not, it's a horror. They can eat the grain, they, they, they cut, uh, the, the plant as a cutworm, so it's a different insect. 
So uh, you must really learn a lot of the species. You not learn only the tools to control. Tools of control is good if you know how to use it. You see, when the insect go to the tassel or in the ear, how to control? Uh, here you have a real problem with uh, the, what do you call, the can uh, maze. So it's hard to control. So maybe uh, all of you know this uh, symptom. Look, you are just uh, thinking about maze. But look, the host, this is commercial crops, commercial crops. So it is almost impossible. Uh, uh, at the least, maize is a preferred host. But we said, uh, how do you say, well, I'm going to, as I told you before, if you use a BT corn or BT cotton or soy, BT soybean, well, there is a lot of cultivar is already is attacked by the pest. And also they say, well, uh, is it possible to use BT corn in Africa? It could be, but here to use a BT corn in Brazil, for example, the farmer must to pay a lot of things. It's not the cultivar. So you, you must control the weeds, you must put the correct fertilizer. That is, so the cost is so elevated. So a small farmer, most of the case, the farmer cannot, they, they can, they, they, the farmer do, do not have enough money to buy the seeds and to treat as the seed demand. So biological control is the best way for sure. Uh, here, I'm going to just put the situation in Brazil, the failure in traditional control. Incorrect time to enter a control measure. It's spraying without considering plant, maize plant, or pest size. As I told you before, after the third instant, it's hard to control with uh, the recommend dose of product. So must adjust, and many times the farmer don't do that. What is the volume of water should I use? Is 100, 150 liter per hectare? You must decide on that. And the nozzle, what kind? Here use a fan nozzle. Another uh, nozzle is not good. Without monitoring, is this a a main cause to failure in traditional control. Incorrect productive choice. Elimination of natural enemies. I say, well, but uh, here in Africa, there is no natural enemies. Maybe uh, in the beginning, when the insect arrived, there is no natural enemies of our army worm, but there is a lot of other pests that have your natural enemies. You cannot consider maize only the, the point, point of view of spodoptera. You should consider that maize has another past. Elimination and the lack of knowledge of natural enemies and population resistant to the applied insecticide. So, so there are fairly uh, in traditional control. So you're going to go now about the biological control. So for the success in biological control using egg parasitoid, what the farmer needs? Well, I already tell them, monitoring. Moss is preferred. Use pheromone trap of virgin female. Another thing, use egg parasitoid, trichogramma or telenomus. I know that in different countries of Africa, there is telenomus. And think about preservation of all natural enemies. Here, you can use, uh, I, uh, like maybe is the, the lecture of Dr. Rex, just uh, talking about this preservation. So this is our friends. In the left is the telenomus hemus. And in the right, the, our trichogramma. 
they are more or less uh, equally efficiency. Uh, telenomos is a little bit better, but trichogramma is much more easier to produce. So that we must have this balance. Recently, not, not so recent, but you published a paper uh, showing biological control with trichogramma increase organic maize productivity by almost 20%. So there is a lot of results showing that uh, the, the, this tool is good to control fowl armyworm. Another advantage, just to navigate in the, our all talk, there is no pest resistant to biological control agent. This is one very nice uh, situation. Uh, another thing compared with chemical pesticide, uh, biological control leave no environment liabilities. Brazil has a lot of the farmer uh, get a, a, a big, big space just to put the uh, chemical waste. So uh, it is that have with uh, biocontrol. And mainly biocontrol agents such as trichogram search the insect pest. Search the insect pest. The other one, if we spray, if you don't put the pesticide almost in the mouth of the larvae, on the, on the body of the larvae, there is no effect. It's not because of the product, but the, the, the technology, application technology. Well, uh, another advantage, uh, we don't want to remove all these products. You must keep the insect pest under an acceptable population level, but they can be a little bit of product there. Well, uh, it's, this is spe specifically in Brazil, there is a lot of commercial product available. And Dr. Hugh, is very interesting. I do believe that farmer can, supervised by university for research institute, have your own biofactory. Uh, interesting thing, if you compare the number of generation of Spodoptera in one, uh, uh, in one season, May season, they can do a discrete generation, five. Trichogram of telenomes, 15. So you see three by one. And uh, unlike the spray that need to reach all plants, parasitoid can be released at a strategic point, use only 20 to 30 point. You can use the different way. You can release the adult, you can use capsule inside each capsule of these that you put uh, four, 4,000 or 5,000 uh, trichogramma pupa. So there is a lot of different uh, way to apply. But anyway, uh, you, you, you use point. So you can easily cover, even children can go to the farmer or use a bike or walking with a motorcycle, just to, uh, release the program. So this is the, the different way that you use here in Brazil. So in, in each place, each country, you can uh, choice the best uh, uh, way to apply this. So easily do this. Or even this, the small farmer. Well, you just have the in cards, you can just impregnate the trichogramming card, protect them. If you just avoid ants, in some place there's problem ants, it just, the, the trichogram just uh, emerge and freely go to the Egg mess the farm you are. So this is uh, here in our lab, our field doing the so the manual uh, liberation release. Look at this, interesting. But it's in the area, a big area. You can use the uh, the the drone. So it's easy. Today you have some company that can uh, handle four drone apply in each drone uh, 100 hectares. Or in one hour, you can cover 400 hectares. Just control, one, one people control this easily, easily. 
But for a small area, you don't need this. You can just throw, as I told you before. I go by hand, you release. But this uh, is the future. You just just uh, uh, you're going to substitute all those uh, amount of uh, big machine to apply. As I told you before, in young plants, in the best way to release ticogram is, is in the beginning, because if you do this immediately, the trichogram just uh, uh, spreads in the field. So you see, and once the leaf area is, is low, the efficacy of the trichogram is much high. It's just because they go to the plant, search if there is a, a, an egg may as put, he said, I can go to the other plants. So it's interesting because the efficiency is higher. And this is the, the easy way the farm to know. The trichogram or telenome just arrived in, in, the, in the egg, search the egg, use the antenna, and put inside the egg the, the, the eggs of the female. And mark that the egg. Well, if I am here, no other female can put more, more than one egg in one egg. So this insect is very, very clever. And the farmer can uh, see, check if there is uh, a good result. Just because four days after the parasitism, the egg become uh, blackened. So the farmer can see, well, look, uh, these uh, uh, egg masses completely parasitized. Uh, I believe that, and uh, you know, I we are doing this in Brazil. Consider in some area that we don't have a natural population of trichogramma. Well, I used to say, well, why you don't split? Here you recommend and you use six sixty thousand female. Well, the best is using 20,000 female per hectare in three days interval. Doing this, you are going to build up a trichogram population. And I remember to tell you before, releasing this, for example, 60,000 female has the potential if the female, one female can parasitize six farm worm eggs, a total of 3,000, no, 3 million, 600,000 eggs is too much. So uh, if you really release the trichogram in the right time, you get a very, very nice result. Uh, we release the trichogramma is interesting. In reality, you allow a reconstitution of the beneficial fauna of organism in, in, the, in the field, offering condition of, for them to reduce natural damage caused by pests. Uh, I, I just to put this uh, picture here, uh, the, you see the Insect pest is how high is the cobblestone? This is the number of the population of foul worm worm larvae. You see, I'm not telling now about the program. I'm just telling about the natural parasitism of larvae. And look, the red dots mean that the level of parasitism. Why is it important to know this beneficial insect? Because here, the farmer used to apply chemical pesticide without knowing the yeast. This air, you see, there is some uh, uh, cobblestone. It's, uh, the two left is high. Well, the number of larvae, for the larvae, is high here, for sure. But look at the, the number of red dots. That they are parasitoid. So if you apply pesticide, you're going to kill all these natural enemies. 
you you spend money, you eliminate you, the uh, farmer friends. And where is this farmer friends? Quickly, this is uh, each date here. I mean the municipality here in, in this country. Look this red color. This is a, one insect called Campolettis flavicinca. A second one, the blue one, is Calonus insularis. Another, e Calonus, not for sure, there is in Africa. Well, what does insect do in, in fact, this uh, natural enemies do? Look, when you have this, uh, this picture in the center of the slide in red is how much a help larvae can eat in terms of leaf, 209 square centimeter. But if the larva is parasitized, uh, they only eat 14 square centimeter. Or in your other, in your other words, parasitized larva reduce food intake by 93%. It's one good thing for the farm. But look on the left. In average, one, only one of these wasps can parasitize more than 200 larvae. So you can, you, you are just using this, you use a very small amount of this insect and give to the farm. What happened, in, uh, when, look at this. Uh, this is the insect, this, the small Campolettis flavicinca. This is a male. You to see what happened. Uh, there is a lot of our real, very, very, very small larvae, parasitized already. And the male is saying to the female, there is still job to do, go ahead. So the insect, the, the male conduct the female. And look, when they find a healthy larvae, they put the antenna uh, over the body of the fowarmium larvae. Look, the, the ovipositor is exposed. Look at what happened to this larvae here. Quickly they do the job, very, very quickly. And it's a very common, as I showed before, that the red graph. This is a natural enemies. And every time you use chemical pesticide, for sure, to eliminate this insect. Well, uh, just going to the, the, the end, it's, I'm going to just uh, mentioning uh, the proper management of the landscape. Uh, I, intend, I understand that Dr. Retti uh, discussed this, but it's important here in Brazil. Uh, this is, uh, you call, I forgot the name, but it's very common in Africa. It's, uh, it's called girasol for us, but I forgot the sunflower. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sunflower, not a commercial one. But it's very good, very good to, to protect. Look at uh, 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 to the right. The, the maize is very young. The sunshine is, is uh, the temperature is very high. So this natural enemy just ride in this uh, uh, sunflower. But there is another crop, so you know that. Yeah. So here is easily. You have uh, that barrier. You have the maize, you have the trap. And you're going to put the Ground. Well, uh, uh, it's interesting because, uh, look, if you have the trichogram release, if you have the other parasitoid, new moss, and consequently new animals and all larvae, you'll be targeted by the natural enemies. So the farmers, sometimes they don't know that uh, there is someone doing the job, all these uh, natural enemies. So it's good, it's good, Professor, that you have little, a good team to do a good work in Africa. Remember, if you farm eliminated the biological control, you inherit their labor. No? Professor Hufaka. Uh, okay, so to the end, the final comment. Well, uh, I believe that depending on the size of the country, you can just use 
to build up a big bio, a central biofabric producing anagasta, producing uh, this is the insect supplier of the eggs to produce trichogram. So only here. And you distribute small, small facility, very, very small facility, just to produce trichograma to filter release. So you don't need to have a lot of big buildings. No, it's only one. Oh, it's depend of the country. This is one thing. And uh, just to finish, you see, this is our biofactor here producing 300 hectare a day. So you see, it's easy because uh, the, uh, well, we need to produce the the Corsilla this, uh, this insect here, uh, Anagasta. And I, this food is based in what? Maize and wheat flour, or flour, or only maize. So the farmer is producing maize, and this use part of this flour to produce our uh, friend. Okay, so. This is the moss and agasta supplier the egg to produce the wasp. Look at this. You get this the flower, the mix with the flower. And here you see for each of these tray, I put 0.2 gram of eggs. Is uh, uh, this is the same as 7,200 eggs. So easily you build up. When the, the, after about 40, 40 days, the new moss come. So the farmer just remove, there is a good automatized is can you remove this moss? It just to get the eggs. Once you get the eggs, you can just put in a card or just submit to the farmer, to the trichogram to get your product easily. Uh, you see, I don't know, uh, Dr. David, I, I don't know if it, I showed this in the last meeting, but look, the total cost of the, this project here is with $23,000, you produce, you produce, this is to commercial factory. You, you put in here uh, the, the, how many, investors receiving uh, used to spend $23,000 a month to produce 300 hectares, it to multiply for three, day, three, three days, 9,000 hectares with this. So uh, in fact, just to produce for one hectare, you need three dollars. So very, very cheap. Here I put how many uh, the fixed monthly cost, eleven thousand dollars, and then you put how it cost of electrical energy, consumption material, uh, the sales commission. You say here this calculation here if for the people that has the bio effect to make money. But if you think that uh, the owner of the biofact will be the farmer association, so the cost is much low. Well, uh, what, uh, to finish, Rui, I'd say, well, we need to have a, a, a word like this, a green word. You must uh, have a good production. You must increase productivity, competitiveness, and quality in loss reduction uh, with safety for the health and people in the environment as a whole. Uh, just believe this is, uh, I, I, I made this film in Mali. I was talking with the farm. Look at this interesting thing. Just believe what is this for us, this wasp is doing. He's just uh, keeping the e dinner for later. So he just killed the insect. Maybe the insect is full by that time. They, there is a hole and try to do the job. 
it's unbelievable what is uh, the job of these natural enemies. If you go to the field, instead of look at the base and look at the past, look around because these are friends. It's, I, I was so happy to see this. I never saw one said doing this. Just to put them. Uh, this is the storage of your food for later on. Well, uh, I hope that maybe I, I, I waste a lot of time, but thank you very much. I put my WhatsApp today is, is using too much. Uh, I apologize for my English, but anyway, the idea is cooperate uh, with uh, Dr. Dave, all the, the team. I have a, a good experience in Africa. I went a lot of time in different country. And really, I hope that you can continue working together with the, the, the Dr. David and also all the, the young team in, in different country. Thank you very much. Now I'll be happy if I could answer it, if there is any question. Well, thank you so much. Uh, this was absolutely not a, a waste of time. This was really, really excellent. And uh, at Plant Village, we really loved the technical details and this was perfect. So I'll, I'm going to stop speaking because I know there are questions already. And I think Annalisa is going to moderate for those questions. Uh, if you could try to turn on your camera, that would be excellent and, and stop sharing. But um, uh, I think our first question, Annalisa, was from Wynke. Just a, just a moment. I, I'm not, I, I tried to do this, but um yeah we can stop your your screen okay sharing. okay i can just stop the share yeah and if you can click on the the icon for the video which should stop sharing off. yeah stop sharing okay super and then maybe you can ah, click okay. on that, the that video is... the video sign and say and click on the video sign oh, it's not the, in the corner he is that no no i'm not i'm not really cannot yeah. start video please select another video camera oh it might be um the software maybe not connecting with your laptop if you haven't used zoom before uh, but usually in this i always use this because you just put start the video it's interesting well, well let's I, go ahead with the questions then yeah yes all right so our first question is coming from Winkit Mukami, who is a part of our team. And so I'll go ahead and unmute her to ask the question. All right, Winkit, you can now unmute yourself. OK, my question was, uh... When uh, installing those uh, traps you are talking about, uh, can that trap be used to serve the whole community or is it specific for that field? Well, a good question. In reality, it depends how far are and how is located the farmers. You see, if you have a plain area, you use one trap uh, monitoring for five hectares. In reality, uh, uh, you're not, you are not using one trap for farmers. Mm -hmm. You see, if you have a... Uh, please? Oh, please continue. I think it was some background noise. Did you understand that you answer? Maybe you could repeat it. I had a problem on my end. It repeated. So um, maybe you could repeat repeat your answer, please. Uh, the answer? Yes, please. Well, well, I'm saying that uh, if you the farmer, the farmer is close, you only need to uh, use one trap to monitoring five hectare. As I told you before, when you get the connection group, we decide where is the best place to put the, the trap. Maybe uh, in, in that farmer that represents the center of the, the different farmer, you can put. So is a, you see, to get success 
first of all, before we started the program, you just sit down and discuss everything. Uh, it's very good because usually uh, the farmer has one hectare, he put one trap. The waste, waste money. So no, you use for that. Uh, remember, uh, the first uh, goal of the trap is just to detect the arrival of the moss. This is to make your decision. But it's interesting to continue to monitoring to see what happened in this year. You can you have a lot of data for the next season. Okay. Thank you. Uh Winkit, I believe you had a follow up question you wanted to ask. Okay, the last question is uh, uh, before installing these uh, traps, you talked about uh, installing them uh, before planting the, the, the crop in the field. What is the time duration uh, bef between uh, putting, installing that trap and uh, planting the, the, the main crop in that field? Yeah, yeah, I understood. Well, the best way, if you're going to plant it today, put the trap today. Because you see, you have a, depend, I know that the temperature is high, but the, the maize you're going to germinate or the emergency should be almost in three to five days. It, it's good because you see, uh, it's interesting. You, you, you should consider that you have put the trap. I already, uh, the farmers already contact the, the source of the trichogram. Because once you get to the tree moss, maybe uh, for sure, immediately when the, the maize emerge from the, the, the ground, you're going to get this tree. So you just uh, uh, receive the, the trichogram and release. You see, we start in Brazil, and uh, as you have a different partner, uh, the farmer really, they don't pay anything. Uh, you see, I don't know, in, in each case, you should consider the best way to do, but uh, they receive the small, small farmer, they receive the, the, the trap and also receive the, the trichogram. Because you see, it's, it depends, the idea is exactly is prepared. And the hypothesis is the farmer will be here soon after the image. You see, it's interesting because uh, maybe this is the reason I used to, in some area, put the, the, the trap. I have trap here for more than 10 years, uh, the whole years, because maybe this doctor is look for another, uh, another uh, food because there are a lot of hosts, but the prefer is maize. So if you put exactly, so you, you put exactly uh, by the time when you are planting, it's good because uh, uh, there is no egg masses, there is no maize still to put egg mass. So you have time to release. Okay. Thank you, Winkit. Was that all of your questions answered clearly? Yeah, those are all my questions. Thank you. So I think we'll move on to Winnie. Um, if you want, you're able to unmute yourself and ask the questions. Thank you. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. So my question was that um, about the biological control method where we release the Spodoptera, Trichogamma and Telenomas in the fields, maybe for example, maize field, uh, can they impose threat to other important pests or ecosystem in case their population surpasses the normal? Or maybe can they feed on each other like they prey on each other in case the population surpasses the normal? That is the first question, please. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> oh, but uh, can you just, uh, I, I didn't get really uh, the question. Can you repeat? Okay, it? thank you. So I was asking about the biological control method where we release the Spodoptera, Trichogamma or Telenomas into the field. For example, is in maize field for them to feed on the larva of the um, Polamiwam. 
can they impose threats to other important pests in the ecosystem or the ecosystem itself, or can they prey on themselves like they're feeding on themselves because of high population number in the field? Hmm. Uh, do, do you tell, tell me that you are releasing Spodoptera in the field? No, is that right? No, yes. I think it's it, 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 releasing trichogramma. Yes. Yes. And what? He, he, what did he, are you worried about what? Can they impose uh, any uh, threat to the ecosystem in case then the number surpasses the normal? Can they impose any threat to the ecosystem itself? Or maybe they find that they're feeding on each, in, on each other because there are too many in the field or how do they how do they maintain that population of theirs in the field? Well, let me see if I understood. You are uh, uh, worrying about the have some uh, uh, disequilibrium in the in the field. Well, if so, no, there is no equilibrium because the biocontrol is exactly density dependent. You see, the idea is it you increase if you release the uh, there is a insect, you release the natural enemies. They're going to slow down the population. And if you slow down the population, the natural enemy population is going to die naturally. Naturally. It's a quite different when applied chemical side. You kill everything, you, you, the disequilibrium is high. No, no, it's a high sustainable system. You see, uh, as a matter of fact, if you look, you, you, if you have the data on the moss. Uh, flow, you see that it's coming every day. So you have the trichogramma or telenomes or another uh, natural enemies just go down in the population. And uh, interesting because you have the case in Brazil for those people that used to cultivate uh, sweet corn, they plant every, every day, or, uh, every 10 days. So you have food and you have the pest. But you're never going to have an environment problem. Uh, this is a natural thing. You see, you are not uh, putting new organism in the field. You just are you uh, reconstruct the natural population. You put this interesting question because you put, as I told you, sixty thousand female because I want to drop the Larval population is put up. And uh, if I do the job, you're going to slow down. But if you look at the flow, next week, there is a lot of moss come from the other side. And you can help not only maize farmer. You are just uh, is good for every farmer that cultivates a crop that is susceptible to spadoptera. So uh, I, I for sure let's say if you apply chemical pesticide, for example, yes, you, there is a complete upset of the uh, of the environment, and especially this happened. You know the, the, this. Uh, if the chemical go to the wonder ground water, they contaminate many many kilometers away from the place you, you put. So if you just put the trichogram right now, uh, hypothetically, if you release the amount, you equilibrate the situation, maybe the next time you don't need to put so much. You can just uh, slow down the amount. But it's a good question. But there is no, no problem because if there is food for this, you see, trichogram has only three days as a tool. This is very short uh, uh, life span. But you see, in these three days, the insect, one female, well, I need to uh, find 60 egg, 60 egg to put my egg. And it, the, the female only has the ability to parasitize 60. After that, there is no more important. Yet they, they said that they don't feed. So it naturally you're going to die. If there is no target pass, you're going to die. Okay? Yes, thank you.
Winnie, é Winnie? Yes, yes, thank you. Did, did, you, met, you. did you met me in some of the, those uh, FAO meeting? Not really, I'm not sure. Because this name, is, even in that uh, meeting in uh, Ghana? Not really. No, okay. Winnie, did you want to ask your second question? And that was in the chat? Or? Yes, uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure if maybe Dr. Cruz has already um, answered it, but I just wanted to ask, though after explaining, he said that they have a short life cycle, like an adult only three days. And that was, it is connected to my second question that I wanted to ask, if we can easily maintain those biological pests in the ecosystem naturally without going to the lab and reproducing some and again, bringing it to the field. So, I'm not sure if it is already answered. No. Yeah, the, what I am, I'm trying to, to put here is uh, all the tools <coughs> that you use to control pests is to have an immediately response. And uh, I know maybe you could ask, well, if I'm going to change, instead of use a chemical, use a, a fungi, for example, apply the fungi, for example, control all these productive larvae. And by the, 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 the fungi, there is no mobility, no mobility. So if they come in a new infestation, you must apply again, okay? Uh, but if you release the trichogramma, you're going to, to die very soon. But in 10 days that they arise, a new generation is going to work like this. Uh, if the pest increase the population, the trichogramma also increase, decrease, decrease. If there is no problem. Well, the thing is, but you must do this because if you don't do this, the amount of lar the amount of moss come inside the farmer, the amount of eggs that are laid there, uh, usually what happened? There is no way to control because the amount of in the diversity of natural enemies is not enough to control the best. Because instead of uh, I, I I told you that flower worm this life cycle is thirty days. 30 days for a discrete population. But once you have every day uh, flux, uh, flow of uh, uh, moss, so you're going to have a constant uh, amount of insect. Uh, uh, if you, the reason why I just believe the trichogramma, because he works by himself. And the other method depend on the man. In fact, the trichogram that you use depends on the man to produce in my effect. But if you, in some case, here in Brazil, in an organic farmer, you don't need not, do not, nothing because we already rebuild the natural meat population. It's enough. Uh, maybe uh, what I say, well, I want, this is the best situation. I do this job, you slow down the population and after some time, some one year or more, you get a, a equilibrium. So you have a good environment condition. It depends, continue to be there, but in low population. As a lot of other species that are uh, eating maize without reducing uh, the, the production. You should consider the economic injury level is an economic level. If you put the other one, the social uh, uh, benefit or, or the environment beneficial, for sure. Uh, sometimes there are people work uh, just think, well, biological control can make a, a, a eruption on the system. No, no way, no way, because it's a, it's a self uh, regulation. So there is no food, I'm going to die. I don't know if you catch correctly the answer to that. <laughs> uh, yes, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Any follow-up questions from you, Winnie? 
Mm, for now, not really. Thank you so much, Annalise. You, you should just to remember, Winnie, because now in Brazil, is I, I just uh, wake up. Now it's 11 in the morning. Maybe I believe that's afternoon in, in your place. Yes, sure. <laughs> All right, thank you. So now we'll move on to Matthew to ask his questions. Uh, thank you, Annalise. Uh, my question was, uh, how many times do you do documentation of uh, egg parasitoids in the field uh, before harvesting, uh, maybe in Brazil, so that you can compare on what we do here in Kenya? OK, uh, uh, you see, uh, I many times emphasize the need to know the flow of moss. You see, usually during the winter time, the flow of moss slow down. If you do the right job, maybe you are supposed to release only once. But you see, uh, if you have close, uh, your field is a big field, the almost uh, starting tassel. And uh, there are another field, uh, a very young field. Maybe the most prefer go there. But you should consider that later on, when you begin to have the, the, the grain, the moss can just come just to see in the year. So it's uh, essential to continue look of the flow of moss. But if you release, again, very well, soon after the May's emergence, in doing the tree liberation, for sure you're going to do a very good job. So you see, well, well look, the, 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 in the trap, the moss is just slow down. Don't forget, it's not only trichogram. You have a lot of predators. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to show all the, the, the film that I have. It, because it, when you, you don't put any other thing, specifically chemical, it, you start building up these natural enemies. It, it, this is what happened. It, it, our uh, example is with organic. When pull by law, they can't put anything. They must trust of natural enemies. The trichogram is, is helpful because it's a specific eggs. If there is larvae, you see there is one, uh, 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 a very, very thin parasitoid. I know that in Africa has, is a, uh, a cotesia, cotesia, here emerging event for, for Brazil, but in some country uh, from Africa is uh, uh, cotesia ECP from the, the institution. So, it, in fact, once you, the farm decide, and you are talking with uh, scientists, you, know, you should consider the farm. But in the case of the connection, uh, do you see, well, you can see, well, and, uh, in the farm A, well, I released the program was very good. And the B is very good. And the C is not that bad or that good. And you start to, what, what happened? Let's also start monitoring the predators, another parasitoid. Uh, we, I, I was responsible for that chapter in the book from uh, you know, FAO. There, I write the protocol that can be used to collect the larvae in the, in the field, bring here, just to say, well, these are important parasitoids. The predators easily. You can see the, 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 the bugs, a lot of bugs, the earwig. I know that some count are earwig. Depend on the population, for example, of ear, 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 earwig. You don't need even put the trichogram. But the, the, the release of trichogram, besides the good effect that they have, is a, you create a culture in the farm. Say here, you use biocontrol. And it seems to me almost all the African country is conscious the opportunity, the good effects 
uh, in terms of uh, uh, environment and protect people. But uh, for sure, you don't need the exact release all the time. If you, you see, uh, suppose that you have, as I told you before, a coordinator of the connection. Say, well, you're going to build up a map. Oh, look, look, in this, in this time of the year, it's going to be so high. And well, okay, uh, Dr. David Dr. have a lot of students. Let's put one student just to, to search for the predators or parasitoid. Well, but this, this predator is the, the borrow of the, the, the maze or, or the cut. It doesn't matter. Usually, the predator are generalists. They can eat everything. Look at that uh, last film. I, I don't know that, that uh, wasp, but it's surprisingly how good is the job. You see? It may be there is even, even uh, natural enemies praying in, in the soil where the pupa are. Okay? But anyway, I like this discussion. There is a lot of things still we must learn. I hope that I can uh, sometime uh, be able to visit Kenya. That, that wasp was a sphesid wasp. It was a burrowing wasp, um, sphesid, S-P-H-E-C-I-D, sphesid. Okay. Thank you for that answer. Matthew, was that clear? And then would you like to ask your second question? Yeah, at least that was clear. Uh, then my second question, question was, uh, what was the feedback of Mali people? Uh, and at what rate did they implement this use of biological control of how? Of course, uh, this, this question, because I um, asked this question because I wanted to compare with the with the feedback we've been getting from our farmers, of course, as we, we've released uh, for, uh, that is in, the, in their fields. Can you repeat for me? Yeah, sure. Uh, my question was, uh, what was the feedback of Mali people? Uh, and at what rate did they implement this use of biological control of fowl? Help me, Dr. David. What was the feedback from the people in Mali when you released the parasitoids to control fall armyworm? Uh, you see, I'm sorry for the mistake. Well, it, it was very good. Uh, the thing is, uh, specifically Mali, they have some uh, political problem there because we set up the, the biofact in 1910. I went back in 1916. At, at this time, the, the Spodopta was uh, a real problem. And there is a lot of uh, modification on the staff of that, that institution. Well, uh, for th those places that, place that they release was very good. But the, the main idea that have Mali produced for for more country was not good because as I show you, I prefer the one country has one factor producing uh, for the country. And sometimes you need more than one. In terms of uh, efficiency, there is no problem. As a matter of fact, uh, in this, those case is uh, unbelievable. Uh, the amount of natural enemies that they already have so the trichogramma was good because it make the, the, the job, but uh, it, it was a substitute of the chemical. So in this case, we have two different uh, uh, response. You have the response of the trichogramma by per se, but you have also the uh, response by the other natural enemies because, just because you remove chemical. But uh, yeah, it's very good. If, if is that uh, sure? Because they have the biofacts up to, to today, and I I hope you see there is one thing that I forgot to mention. Uh, quickly, you see how to produce these, but in the biofactor you have a waste, a mixture 
of dead insects, it's a few, but the, you have a lot of rest of diet, um, waste of the diet. That you, is very good to hearing uh, pieces or chicken. So you drop too much uh, the, the final cost. For this reason, uh, also, the as I told you, you follow maybe the real cost to produce a uh, amount of one hectare is under one dollar. You see, if you use also this waste, you can increase this. There is some uh, biofact adjusted is use even the moss when the dead, adjust the package this and uh, sell for uh, to monkey food or, or birds. So it's interesting. Maybe, maybe Professor, if there is a good question, and can just uh, uh, you know the time just to see this advantage, because you see it's a lot of advantage. You see uh, another thing: if you have the anagasta production, you can use hearing um, coccinellida. It's easily used to uh, to hearing coccinellida. Uh, to the same eggs. So, so the, the, the thing you see, you should uh, consider the total thing. But in Brazil, our goal is environment. And uh, it's one thing. Another thing is just because ah, uh, someone say, well, uh, you are, uh, the farm say, I control the pest very good. I just make one or two applications. It's not true because the farm, the, the pest re continue reduce. It's just because if you look one hybrid that you plant in the experiment station, it produces, for example, uh, 15 tons. And the farmer produces uh, 80 tons. Well, it's a good, it's a good, but it's not the, the, the maximum level because the insect feed. Consider one thing Spodoptera reduced the production for sure. And maybe another pest reduce less. But if you consider two another two or three other species eating, they uh, consider one by one, the reduction is less. But you just add the three, maybe you reduce more than Spadopter. So you should, should consider this. Uh, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's good if you are in the, in the field, or you have a lot of sucking insect that they give you any damage effect by transmit uh, disease. So, uh, but uh, the, the, the expectation was very good, very good. You see, uh, maybe you, you know the, the, the company that Copert, Copert International come to Brazil. Why? That's the reason. Because the market is so huge. You should consider one advice. Africa is located in a place, strategic place. The consumer is just a little bit above. So you see many of the food just arrived from the south. Well, you can just produce in the, Good, good product to, to, to sell. You and just I have a, a very good experience in Mozambique that we just introduced soybean maize just to produce uh, chicken and send. See, there is a you, you cannot consider a individual situation is a, a whole. Okay, next if there's I'm home, so I have plenty of time. Great. Was that clear, Matthew? Yes, Annalise. Thank you. All right. I believe now we'll move on to Gladys. So you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Sure. Thank you. So my question is, uh, can we continue to populate the parasitoids in the lab without having the maize on the fields since we need the eggs of the full armyworm to feed them? And uh, uh, for instance, we have so many farmers. So if we wanted them to benefit from the parasitoids, is it possible to populate so many of them? And my question in bracket is how do we store them so that uh, when the season is on, we can now distribute to these farmers' fields? 
Well, uh, first of all, uh, uh, our biofabricure is continuous. You don't uh, stop anytime. So you produce, in fact, you use the uh, Anagasta larvae to maintain. If the demand is low, you do is low. There is no problem because uh, uh, you produce egg every day. So you can sometimes put in a low temperature. So there is no problem there. Uh, and in fact, uh, well, if there is the demand for trichogram is low, you, you can maintain uh, a small colony. But in the case of Anagasta, you continue to produce. As I told you before, you can just, uh, uh, well, now I'm going to hurry uh, coccinellid because you have today in a horti, horti, horticulture, uh, there is a lot of pests, of tomato, the bean. So you can uh, just sweep for another type of natural enemies, especially predator, and uh, you continue to sell. This is in the, uh, the point of view of uh, commercial biofactor. Uh, the second one, I, I didn't catch it in terms of the, the, the pharma. Uh, if we have uh, so many farmers and would like them to benefit, and uh, maybe during the off season, we are populating these parasitoids. How are we going to preserve them so that uh, when the season is on, we can have these uh, parasitoids in their farms? Well, you see, uh, if you, you are just talking about maize crop, but you know that uh, trichogramma, uh, it can parasitize over 200 species. So in Brazil, you, the registration of trichogram is not for the crop, for the pest. So uh, if you look, well, the farmer A, well, there is no more maize at this time, but they, it could have another uh, crop going on. So, it, so for each one of the farmer, you can have a, a specific recommendation. Because you see, well, now the farmer A, they don't have any maize crop in the field, but they have another one. Uh, maybe they have, uh, uh, how to say, tomato or cotton. Well, you can uh, use also uh, the trichogram for this pest. You are talking about doctor just because it's recently entering in different countries. But the trichogram, the idea is uh, maintain the population if you look. There is a lot of uh, weeds that uh, the trichogram can survive. Another thing, there is K in case uh, is, it can do this. Maybe I remember now. You can. Uh, release in the field, uh, beside the trichogram, you can put some cards with uh, unviable eggs of uh, uh, Anagasta. Because in the case that the trichogram don't find the host, the main host, the doctor, but uh, Helicoverpa is uh, a host. I know that in some country you have uh, uh, the all butter, but you can just put the survival eggs there uh, just for survival, survival. But there is not a problem. I believe that at that time that you, you don't have many maize, you just slow down the biofactory, just maintain the colony, okay? But anyway, you, I believe that the idea is the connection. Well, today, Professor was going to, well, I'm going to select 10 farmers or the next year, 20, so it depends. So maybe, I believe Dr. Davis just preparing the professional to, to assume uh, uh, this task. Uh, yesterday I received an invitation to go for someone that's finished course in integrated pest marriage uh, in Mozambique. He, he, I know the guy that is for that, I, have some days within the fall meeting. So it's interesting this question because it's, it's a natural. Because you see, well, but there is no maize. I, I'm going to ask you, do you believe there is no maize the fall of is going to be eliminated? Well, sure not. You have a lot of 
look, Brazil has a lot of uh, brachiaria grass. Brachiaria is from Africa. They can just eat on this spodoptera. So you just talk about the major problem is maize. But uh, for sure, uh, the trichogramma has the way to survive in another pest that is, uh, or even is spodoptera, eating another crop. Yeah. Finish question. <laughs> Thank you for that. Gladys, was that clear? Yes, yeah, it was. Thank you. Great. So now I'll ask Maria, who had asked a question in the chat, to unmute and please ask your question. Maria de Lourdes from Brazil. She works a lot in trichogramma. That uh, play, published paper that I show in organic is uh, uh, she is the first author. Have a good experience. We cannot hear you, Maria. Maybe he's, she's right in the question, or maybe she wants to speak in Portuguese. That's fine as well. Um, she had uh, Question uh, in the chat. It, so. it, it's it's uh, the microphone is closed. Okay. I'm sad to hide my my key. Um, her, her her question was, Dr. Cruz, how many countries in Africa or the Brazil program produce trichogramma? Do you already have some data from the field results? Well, uh, good question. Well, there is a lot of program going in Africa. As a matter of fact, in the first meeting that I went there, FAO just uh, invited, FAO, ZAID, uh, just invited 250 specialists from all the world. So there is a lot of uh, program going on, but it's not biocontrol. It's interesting, the last meeting that I went there was in, uh, in Addis Ababa, in Ethiopia. Uh, there is a, a proposal for a consortium and the biocontrol was one of the priority. You see, after that, with the pandemic, with the coronavirus, you see, I think, but I, uh, Africa indeed has a good expectation for biocontrol. It's different from Brazil. Brazil is a good, good idea by commercial biofactor. And I'm just fighting in a good way, fighting these people because they, know how to produce and selling the product. But uh, once the farmer get the product, well, uh, almost uh, impossible to see if it's going to do the right job. So my work, this is again, I uh, thank you, Dr. Dave. My work is just say, there is no way. Product is one thing. They put this, the right product in the right time, the field is another thing. If you look at the, that graph, there are too many spodoptera. You see, if you look at, well, I need to apply a, 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 a product every, every day, every, you know, every week. So you, you, sometimes you are applying some technology to control the pest, but you are underestimating uh, the efficiency. And this is the reason, because in Africa, a small farmer, it's not, they are not necessarily uh, organic producer, but they can be uh, WC. Uh, look, uh, uh, today to buy the uh, personal equipment, the protection it is, is expensive. So there is, uh, uh, I know, for example, in, in Mozambique or even in Mali, uh, the they pay very, very, the payment that is very, is very low. And I believe that if you increase the yield and uh, my yield, the maize or bean, every, every crop you produce with no chemical product. So you can, I, this is another group, another professor from the university. Well, let's put this African product to, to sell, to make income for, for the farmer. 
you see, because I know there is a, some, in some case, in some region such as, for example, Cabo Verde, there is a lot of stones. You, you, it is impossible to prepare the soil with machine because you see stone, stone. So is, uh, the, the, the planting is by hand. But anyway, maize is the main food source for the people. So you, you have a, a, in this program, I know that you know, it's, this is a, a, it's a social program. And uh, you see, if you put these people, uh, for example, Brazil has uh, orchidia, you, you know, it's a, it's a, a flower, is very expensive. There is a lot of aphids that go there. If you just uh, has a bioeffect, just producing the coccinella and selling for uh, uh, people from the, the city, is not the, the, in the in the agriculture. So uh, the bio biocontrol is uh, is a good things. And uh, why you ask why change? It's not only for the farmer. You are changing because of the consumer. You see. This, uh, today is only there is only every day is just talking about by economy. This is the, the, the uh, where should we go? In our work in research, you should consider we are important. You are the, those people that are going to 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 find things. To you see, uh, there is every day we found here in Brazil, maybe in, in every place, new natural enemies. Today you are using, using uh, biotechnology just to quickly um, describe a new species. So uh, when I heard about the, the question, well, the, uh, releasing this natural meat, you can upset the environment. Well, you are upsetting the environment uh, since after the Second World War putting too much chem pesticide. Every day, if you look at the health report, you say, well, they have almost amount of the people suffering by this disease or the consequence of the chemical. You see, uh, it's interesting, uh, Brazil, every, every year, there is some people from the government go to the good, the big market and select sample and say, well, you cannot, the, the tomato is completely out of the minimal uh, permit of chemical. But the people don't know, well, okay, let's condemn it, tomato, but I don't know who did this. So you need to, to change a lot. But going with biocontrol, you can just change this. Because I want to, buy a, a fruit, an apple, for example, free from residues of chemical. So the, well, anyway, everyone has a- Thank, thank you very much. Argument that. Uh, our next question. Thank you. So um, Serge, I believe you have our next question. Yes, it is. Uh, thank you, Dr. Cruz. That was amazing, and we learned a lot today. Thank you very much. My question is follow up uh, the question uh, your uh, network in West Africa. I want to ask if you have any update about the work that uh, you initiated there and how people are organizing to keep improving the use of uh, the biological control, and also what you think should be really done in the area in the West African uh, region to really increase the use of these uh, methods. Okay, thank, thank you, thank you. Well, well I, as I told you before, before the, the pandemic, you are preparing to have uh, well, well, joint work with different universities. And uh, it's coordinated for FAO, they used to set up a big program for biocontrol in different universities. I still is waiting for this. I just uh, should comment with Dr. Baby. This could be a good idea because you see, uh, each country has a different kind of culture. 
but anyway, uh, I don't know if you know, I went to several countries of Africa. And uh, two years ago, come here in my lab, people from Mozambique, Cabo Verde, Guinea-Bissau, Sierra, Sierra, Sierra Leone. I don't know. Uh, you see, uh, the, the, my expectation that you could increase too much this program. Because I, I belong here in Brazil. I have a group, a big, huge group that involves taxonomies. I, I, the idea is exactly to work together. Well, I still work in this. There is a, a professor from, uh, from uh, India, Sanaro, Dr. Sanaro. Yeah, I have some contact in uh, ICRISAT. And, and the idea, I, I am open to work together. And it's interesting because the idea is doing a, a scientific work, but not in a small plot. Is uh, so it may be, Raimon, and can you talk a little bit more this? Because uh, there is a, we are still uh, going in this direction. Try to do, uh, to join, maybe you can do a, a good international connection. Maybe Dr. Dave can just uh, organ organize this and they started doing this because uh, in terms of knowing the new natural enemies, uh, it's interesting to evaluate the, how many, how is the reduction in food intake for the past for natural enemy A, A B, C, D. So I can do, I'm open. This is the, 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 my, my exp clear expression. I'm open to talk, to, to work together with every country in, uh, in Africa. Uh, you see, I, I went to the uh, in country from French language or English language or Portuguese language, okay? I don't know if it's, uh, it's good for you, but uh, there is a lot of uh, front working this, but uh, particularly in biocontrol. I know there is a lot of pressure. You see, everyone wants to see, uh, uh, want to sell, uh, or BT maize or campesite, you see. But anyway, one thing, the natural enemy work by themselves. The other one depend on the farmer. So you, you see, if you manage correctly the, the environment, you can have good result. But anyway, uh, feel free to contact me. It could be through the analyst and Dr. David. Yes, you can continue to talk. It will be, I'll be proud if I can, I can help you in some way. Great, that's a, such an excellent way to, to stop. Um, and I think that what we're gonna do, we have many, many more questions to answer. So this is really showing what wonderful enthusiasm we have for these technical details. And we're gonna follow up on WhatsApp. Uh, Annalise took your WhatsApp number and uh, we'll continue to ask questions. And, and you know, we're really um, grateful for your wonderful legacy of work in this field and, and your willingness to share that legacy with uh, these young researchers uh, in Kenya. But actually we've had questions from, from West Africa and also Brazil. So thank you so much indeed. Uh, Dr. Cruz for taking your time to be with us um, and I'll leave the last words to Annalise uh, to wrap up but uh, I just wanted to express my very strong appreciation for your your technical expertise and willing to share that so thank you so much indeed. Okay uh, as a matter of fact uh, I must again thank you because uh, you see there is one thing maybe is, is favor the Brazilian people in every country that they went from Africa uh, we are well, well received for the people. And uh, you see, uh, the, the, it's interesting because I, I spent a couple of years in the US. I have a son that was born in the US. But you see, uh, independent of the language origin of Africa, uh, the culture of Brazil is very, very similar for all African countries. You see, uh, when Sierra Leone come here, well, they don't speak Portuguese uh, or Spanish, or English. Well, you see, it's well, very good. You, you have a good time. It's interesting, the course uh, stop 
exactly two days before the pandemic. After that, you are in, working at home. But anyway, I, I hope, and specifically, Dr. Dave, I expect that in some way you can just work together uh, toward the, maybe the African colleagues, friends. I have a lot of friends in Africa. Thank you very much, and at least thank you. I will think it's okay. Uh, unfortunately, they cannot see me. <laughs> I don't know why. The next time. Well, hopefully, if we get the chance to travel again and you're able to come to Kenya, our we would certainly love to welcome you to our team and show you around some of our own demo plot and trial fields while we're releasing parasitoids and working with the farmers there as well. But really, thank you for your time again. I, was... just, I have one question, if possible. Mm -hmm. uh, if this uh, talk was recording, if I, if I can get a copy so, so I can see the people at school and try to review and improve for the next time. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll be sharing the recording within the next two days once we get it um, from Zoom. Okay. Good night for everyone. Yes. Every, yeah. It'll be also on YouTube as well. So anyone is able to view it from the public. Okay. All right, well, thank you so much again. Um, and we'll be in touch with, I'll create a WhatsApp group after this. So. Okay. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day and we'll be in touch later. Thank you everyone for joining as well. And the recording will be sent out in the next two days. The seminar series for next week will not be, we'll be taking a one week break and then returning the following. So thank you everyone and enjoy the rest of your days and evenings. Bye. Thank you.